So we're going to learn today is how to use very common uh, nodes that really probably get no attention. But I use them in almost every workflow. And one of them will be the split node and the other will be the aggregate node. I'll show how to use these in a few real life examples. And then I'll show you a bonus one where we use both of them together and very practical stuff. So it's not just me going to be making up something. <laughs> So, okay, I mean, hang in there, you'll learn something, and you'll get ahead of the game. You don't want to be under pressure building something uh, on a project for a customer and not know what nodes to go, go to and grab. And hopefully this will just help you kind of learn, even though you might not right now remember it. When you get stuck in that moment, it will come to mind, and hopefully you'll remember how to use it. All right, good luck. All right, so in this one, we're going to put the aggregate aggregate node right there. And this one I just pushed up and down is a testing database query one that comes with NADN. And we want to pass it into the LLM once to get a summary of all our to-do items for the day or all our customers. But if we don't put the aggregate node there, we're going to get five iterations through this guy. And I don't want five. Um, here, let me just reset this data so it works for this node. Uh, and actually it worked for both of them. One moment. And then I'm going to run it, but I don't obviously want to hit the API or the AI five times. I want to give it all of it at once. So right away, I can just put it into the aggregate node and then connect them back up here. And then if I open up the aggregate node, you'll see all I'm doing is dragging or actually in this one, I don't even drag. I just set it to all data. And then once I choose all, it will just just do the work for me. And so at this point, if we were to run this, um, I can just run it here. Now, you can run a node right there, but sometimes it will not work. Just click until it works. It's just one of those things. And then now you see we have one. And when we go into it, we see that we've made a new data array of the objects. And, and that's it. So now we can put that into the AI in a way that just is one query. And again, great way to summarize data feed the AI multiple items in one go. All right, hopefully that made sense and um, we'll move on to the next one. All right, so let's look at uh, looping. Now, looping's a topic in and of itself. We'll cover in some other video and I'll get a lot of negative comments, I'm sure. So with looping, uh, there's this thing called done. <clears throat> and what I wanna look at is what to do when I'm done. So say in this case, I went over five items and I did some work on those items. I manipulated them or created new data or whatever. Then when we come out of this, I might want to share those results or save them. So here I just changed the date format to a different format. And so when we get to the done, we have five items, but I don't want to send this as an email to five different people. For example, I just want to send one email. So I could put the aggregate at the end of this loop and only send one email. Uh, even if I'm not sending the data in the email, honestly, I could just send an email saying done, or I could update a record saying done. It's more that I don't want to update the record five times. Uh, so yeah, that's a very helpful one for loops uh, and done. Um, again, I think I mentioned the external workflows. I mean, good example of like, hey, at the end of the uh, workflow, uh, when you're done, um, you could return something to the uh, parent uh, workflow to say, hey, I'm done. Here are some results. All right. So this is my most used workflow or combination. When I have uh, AI outputting structured data, especially when that structured data is going to be an array of data. Here, let me open this up better. So here's an array of structured data or objects. Sorry. So now it's going to output this array, but I want to loop over it. So say now I want to go into the other area and tweet all of these or whatever. You get the point. So when I do that, it's just going to be one item, but I want to turn it into whatever it outputs. So here we can see the output uh, and we can see where it puts the array and I can drag it over and then I can run it. Now, if we look on the right, it looks like one, but that's just a schema. There's really five items here. So if we go to table view, we can see them. Uh, if we go to JSON view, we can see them. So yeah, now you can do whatever you want with this data to loop over it. But that's how you can get that particular uh, 
uh, a list of data out of the AI and into the next step to do what you need to do. Really, really key one. I use that one all the time. All right, here is a good example of when we get results from an API. Uh, we're going to hit an API and then split it out into something I can loop over. So if we look at this API, it's actually a pretty cool API. I was actually uh, pretty impressed with it. Uh, but if we go hit it, we can get some trending information. Yes, I know it's not a new API. I just never bothered using it. And so when we get the results from an API, we want to basically, uh, hold on, sorry about that. We want to take a moment to, to get the data we want from that result. So you'll get different objects and different arrays and different metadata, but we just want a certain thing. So in this one, we find the, the data we want, the key or keys, uh, and we just use them uh, by placing them into the split out. So if we look on the left and we find the uh, keys, because there's actually, we're about two keys deep in here, we can drag them over. And it's funny because, you know, typically when you drag here, it would become like those curly brackets. But in many or some nodes, it's really just, you're just dragging the dot notation path over. Uh, and then you can choose options here. You could minimize fields, which is cool because you may be in the next output, you need to just have less data so you don't overwhelm, say, uh, an AI because it has a limited context window. Uh, and obviously, you can do other stuff here, like uh, ignore dot notations and whatnot. So yeah, that's how you can take an API request and then just get the items you want on it out of it to then do the next step, which could be to loop over it or to feed it one at a time to a different system. Uh, so here's a loop. And now when we loop over, it, we will do 18 things instead of one. So yeah, that's another good example of uh, the split. One more to go. All right, so this is using them together. And actually, it's pretty common. Um, this isn't just made up. So in this case, uh, we've covered this before, but uh, this is an external example. So uh, other workflows calling to it. And the job of this uh, workflow is to get quotes and then return quotes. But we don't want to return everything from the AI, so we just grab the quotes. But now we don't want to return. We don't want to return like twenty quotes. We want to turn one. So we aggregate them back down into just one, and that one represents the all the four quotes. It could do whatever it wants with it on its end. Uh, really good one. 